Hello everyone, this is Crypto Bitlaw back with your blockchain legal brief, and today we're going to be covering the BitMEX founders and their guilty plea to federal anti-money laundering charges. And so, if you like this content, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. And with that said, let's dive right on in and see what this is all about. All right, so as we can see here, this is a Wall Street Journal report, and this was based off a press release that came down yesterday from the DOJ. And it's about how the BitMEX founders pled guilty to anti-money laundering violations. They say Arthur Hayes and Benjamin Dillo, co-founders of cryptocurrency derivatives exchange BitMEX, entered guilty pleas in New York. And here is a picture of Arthur Hayes in 2017, and he recently pleaded guilty to violating Bank Secrecy Act's anti-money laundering provisions. So continuing on... They say two of the co-founders of cryptocurrency derivative exchange BitMEX have pleaded guilty to violating U.S. anti-money laundering law and agreed to pay a $10 million fine. Arthur Hayes and Benjamin Dello admitted to violating the Bank Secrecy Act's anti-money laundering provisions during a hearing Thursday in New York federal court. Both men entered the pleas after reaching agreements with prosecutors. Dello and Hayes were among four BitMEX executives charged in 2020 in a U.S. crackdown on the Seychelles Incorporated Exchange. At the time, it was one of the world's largest cryptocurrency derivatives trading platforms. Prosecutors said the men flouted anti-money laundering rules. BitMEX failed to perform basic identity checks on customers, and its leadership turned a blind eye to reports their platform was being used to launder proceeds of crime and to move money in violation of U.S. sanctions prosecutors added. The two defendants publicly professed they were keeping the exchange's operations clear of the U.S. and of relatively stringent U.S. banking rules, but knew that U.S. customers were using BitMEX, according to prosecutors. BitMEX entered into a $100 million settlement with U.S. regulators in August. The exchange didn't admit to regulators' allegations, but vowed to keep U.S. residents from using its services. As part of their plea deals, Messrs. Dello and Hayes agreed with prosecutors that non-binding federal sentencing guidelines call for a prison term between six months and one year. Both men are free to argue for a lesser sentence at their sentencing hearings. Representative for Mr. Dello said that the fines outlined in Thursday's plea and the earlier settlement. U.S. authorities have recovered any profits linked to U.S. activity. Mr. Dello regrets that BitMEX lacked an adequate customer identification program, the representative said. A representative for Mr. Hayes said he accepts responsibility for his actions and looks forward to putting the matter behind him. So, um, as we've seen before, there's just a continuing pattern of U.S. regulators and law enforcement agencies cracking down on uh, exchanges and entities that do not engage in KYC, Know Your Customer, AML, anti-money laundering, um, safeguards, laws, and provisions. So <laughs> if you don't engage in those and you're, you're serving U.S. customers, then you're going to have a bad time. Pretty much the United States government wants to know virtually everything about what's going on in the crypto space and the transfer of funds, digital assets, and what have you within the United States in their sphere of influence. I think what's really interesting is how this is going to play out with something like, um, for say, KuCoin Exchange. I know that KuCoin doesn't engage in KYC AML in the United States, but they do have a cap on how much you can withdraw per day. I think it's something like maybe a few Bitcoin per day is what you can get in and out. But, you know, I think it's interesting the fact that you don't actually have to go through KYC AML with KuCoin in the same way that you do with pretty much every other major exchange that you can access in the United States. So if you're talking like a Coinbase, a Gemini, um, Binance, or even, um, you know, Bittrex or something like that, you've got to do all of this KYC AML. Um, uh, it, you have to comply with those provisions. You have to submit your driver's license. You have to give them uh, proof that it's you, whether it be a bill, an energy bill linked to your residence. You have to... Um, give them your social security number, right? So they want all of this information to verify and know that you're the one using this and that if anything suspicious happens, you're the one that's going to be held accountable. You don't have to do that with KuCoin. And I know a lot of other exchanges, they will uh, geofence you know, United States users from being able to use their service. But KuCoin, you can just hop right on and use it, you know, no problem without having to go through all the KYC AML. So that's interesting. And then um, just to draw your attention to this, this is a more in-depth um, analysis or just overview of the guilty plea. 
that was released by the Department of, uh, of Justice. It was the Southern District of New York U.S. Attorney's Office. Um, it was released Thursday, February 24th, and it pretty much goes through um, the guilty plea and some of the allegations against these defendants and their ultimate resolution to this. <laughs> it's interesting. They're calling this guy Hayes and Dello. Um, you know, I guess in part why they were able while why they were able to operate is because they were operating out of Hong Kong, as you can see here, in order to circumvent U.S. jurisdiction. But I mean, ultimately, they weren't able to circumvent circumvent it for for too long or in perpetuity because, you know, the the long arm of Johnny Law ended up catching up with them. And I think that you know ultimately this is going to happen. And we can even you know draw an analogy to uh, cases that are currently panning out, things like. Um, the Terra Luna case, uh, Terraform Labs, um, being served subpoenas by the uh, the SEC, and you know United States agencies and governmental entities in the United States, if they want to get you, they're going to get you. And I know Doquan in that case said he, he's not really concerned with um, having to succumb to U.S. based jurisdiction, but I mean, if he starts getting uh, you know criminal actions or you know serious civil penalties, they're going to extradite him here. You know, they're going to find you any any individual that is involved with um, operations that could go afoul of U.S. law. And if those individuals are operating in a jurisdiction that has an extradition treaty or is a party to the Hague Convention with the United States, you're going to have a bad time. They're going to get you. So all in all. Yeah, I thought this was an interesting development. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this content. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. We're going to keep you guys up to date with all of the new developments in blockchain law, policy, and regulation. And with that said, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.